So like everybody else, I've been following very closely the Ukraine, um, Russia war and trying to get some insights on it. Um, and I ran across, well, actually, I just sort of naturally gravitated towards John Mearsheimer's knowledge of the situation um, because I respect his analysis generally. He's a political scientist and he's a realist scholar of international relations. Um, I have a background in international relations, but I, I stopped writing on IR quite a while ago and turned towards liberal theory. Um, but I still resonate with Mearsheimer's realism and in international relations and Mearsheimer's take on, on this situation. And I wanna show a clip um, from a recent discussion that he participated in uh, via the Committee for the Republic, which is a um, organization of scholars uh, whose mission seems to be to uh, try to wrestle back from the presidency uh, the war powers uh, so that uh, perhaps the United States is not involved in as many wars in the world. Um, they particularly concerned to prevent the escalation of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine into Europe or turning it into some sort of uh, world war or the use of nuclear weapons. So the big point that Mearsheimer is going to try to make here um, is in response to a fellow who has basically asked, uh, shouldn't we be supportive of say um, any country's um, autonomy, their, their right to choose, uh, who, what other countries they'll be allied to and so on. Um, isn't this also a part of our, um, our like liberal tradition? And Mearsheimer's response as a realist is to remind him that uh, when it comes right down to it, countries and particularly sovereign countries with a lot of military power um, talk a good line sometimes but always act in their own national self-interest and that you can count on that. Um, and therefore, in order to operate effectively in the world and actually to, in order to try to de-escalate and to make things more stable, you have to recognize the basis on which various countries act. And so Mearsheimer has long argued um, that Russia has felt threatened. System. I think that in international politics, states usually pay attention to international law and they pay attention to moral precepts as long as they're in their strategic interests. But if there's a conflict between international law and a country's strategic interests, the country will always privilege its strategic interests and international law and human rights will be pushed off the table. This is why I think it's not very helpful to talk about rights. Uh, when you talk about whether Russia has the right to have a buffer state or Ukraine has the right to have its own foreign policy, these are concepts that, in my opinion, get you into all sorts of trouble. In the international system, might makes right. And the United States would never tolerate a situation where Canada or Mexico invited, in a legal way, China to bring military forces into Toronto or Mexico City. We have a Monroe Doctrine, which is in our strategic interest. And our Monroe Doctrine says, no distant great power is allowed to put military forces in the Western Hemisphere, period, end of story. What the Russians are doing here is they're basically articulating their own version of the Monroe Doctrine. They're saying you cannot turn Ukraine into a Western bastion on our border. It has nothing to do with rights right? It doesn't matter whether Ukraine has the right to do this or that. We're saying they can't do it. Just like we're saying Cuba can't inv 
invite the Soviets to bring military forces into the Western Hemisphere. So for me, when you talk about great power politics, rights in the final analysis just don't matter. Might makes right. And the United States is a mighty powerful country. It's a mighty powerful country on purpose. And it does whatever it thinks is in its strategic interest. And if the rights say that's okay to do, good. But if the rights are at odds with what's in our strategic interest, we do what's in our strategic interest. But let me let me offer this, uh, John. Uh, the Declaration of Independence. Um, now, maybe we departed from it, but it certainly spoke in terms of rights. You know, men and women, they're, they're born with unalienable rights. And they also articulates a right and a duty to rise up and throw off a tyrannical government. Now, maybe the Declaration of Independence is quaint, but actually it's what gave birth to this nation you know, that we're residing in right now. Uh, it may well be that as a descriptive matter, uh, we're still living with uh, Thucydides, the strong do what they can, the weak suffer what they must. Uh, and it may well be that uh, as a practical matter, maybe things don't change, but I don't think we should necessarily view as irrelevant, as you're saying, assigning responsibility. Maybe there's in peri delicto. Uh, and responsibility means making a moral judgment, even if the moral judgment has no immediate practical significance. Don't you think the Declaration of Independence is worth uh, admiring and aspiring towards? I think the Declaration of Independence is of enormous importance. I thank my lucky stars I was born in a liberal democracy, right? And I, I think, like you, regret the fact that liberal democracy is, at, is under threat at home. But my view, and I'm probably different than you, Bruce, in this regard, is that international politics is a different domain than domestic politics. And in international politics, the Thucydides uh, way of thinking about the world where might makes right is what applies. I'm not in favor of going around and beating up on other states, and I'm not in favor of wanton violence and so forth and so on. And I do think that what is happening in Ukraine is absolutely horrible. It makes me sick to my stomach. But on the other hand, I think it's very important to understand basic realist logic. And the reason it's important to understand realist logic is because at least in this case, that's what informs Putin. Putin is thinking like Putin. And Americans have a terribly difficult time putting themselves in Putin's shoes. And this is because Americans tend to think in terms of rights and in terms of American exceptionalism and all these other ideas that I think get us into trouble. I think, you know, going back to the film clip that Ray put up there where Putin uh, talked about in that New York Times op-ed, the trouble America causes by thinking of itself as an exceptional nation is correct. I just don't want to think that way in IR, and I don't want to think about rights when it comes to international relations. So you noticed there that they mentioned Thucydides a couple of times, and um, I started my career with a book on Thucydides and Hobbes and international relations theory, and uh, I wrote several articles and a lot of chapters on the topic and particularly different episodes in Thucydides history, the Peloponnesian War. And I think maybe the time has come to revisit Thucydides. So uh, coming up next, for those of you who wanna get a book, um, I will be discussing Thucydides history of the Peloponnesian War. It's a specialty of mine. Um, it's a classic work. Uh, you can get the full edition, or you can find editions that just uh, sort of encapsulate the central episodes in the history of the Peloponnesian War. Um, I don't know how long I'll spend on this, uh, probably several weeks after um, Spencer is done with his series. Uh, we'll start up on the history of the Peloponnesian War.